Greetings in the name of our loving Savior Lord Jesus. My name is Ruth Binder Singh Sandhu. I was born in a Sikh family, right all the way in northern India in Punjab, in the city named Chandigarh, the first planned city of India. Now that I have been with Lord for a while, I can assure you that He had a plan for me too. Born in a very hardcore, uh, a very strict Sikh family. Uh, but also secular at the same time. Uh, I was born to a father who was a farmer by trade and also a uh, defense personnel, having lived all my life uh, in de defense of environment in a, such a discipline at all times uh, with boundaries around me. I was a very cheeky boy, I was a very naughty boy, uh, I was very joyful at all times, uh, whether necessary or not. Did my schooling very normally as, as any child would do. Uh, did all the, made all the mistakes a normal young child would make. Uh, while I was growing up, I had questions in my mind about God, but not to the point that I would actually run after it or seek the answers to it. I used to question uh, why uh, there are so many gods and why there are so many different uh, people following different ways of doing things, some quite nice and some not so nice uh, and why certain gods look the way they look uh, living in India uh, as I'm sure you can imagine there are different pictures all over the place uh, without caring much I continued with my life during my graduation time I uh, against all odds without even on my own will uh, went to Australia for further education this was back in 1998 when I was a young man at the age of 21 when I arrived in Australia, I knew no one. I was basically on my own, and I'm sure God at that time was with me, but I wasn't aware of it. I met a lovely young girl, her name is Sarah, now she's my wife. She was born in a Christian family, she's a second generation uh, convert from Hinduism. She used to talk about God all the time. I noticed that she used to pray to Jesus for every small need she had. For everything she asked for, I noticed that she received, and it made her. It, it, it gave her a quite a wonderful joy, uh, and she used to be. Uh, 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 she used to be very abundant in her explanation to people as to how she prayed, and she received everything, and God's favor and grace was upon her. That made me think as to this girl was very lucky that whatever she desired, she actually received. Uh, the only difference I noticed was that others were just lucky, and she prayed for it. She started talking, as our friendship grew while we were studying in two different cities over the phone, I noticed that she started to tell me about Jesus and how he's a God and uh, various other things that are related to Christianity. As I was born in a, even though a sick, strict background, but still a very secular background, uh, I started to hear her and I always was uh, very cheeky in my uh, responses where I gave either return reply by questions or gave her uh, answers which I think at best is very difficult for people to answer uh, even today. Uh, I did accept to her that Jesus was God, that's the God of Christians, so is the God of Hindus and Muslims and so on. So we in our Sikh families have our God too. Uh, moving on after a few years as the relationship grew a bit deeper it, it, it started coming to me when I attended uh, churches on her request to come and hear the Word of God. I felt that when preachers were preaching the message, that they somehow knew that I had committed a such, a, such a sin that morning or that evening or that week. And they would preach the sermon on that. And it felt like somebody was throwing shoes at me. Because I felt like, oh, hang on a second, how did this person know what had I done? Uh, during the week or during that day. Uh, moving on, it came to a situation where after attending the Word of God uh, meetings and uh, listening to the Word of God, uh, I, it, there was a situation in 2004 uh, where I knew a little bit about Jesus and I uh, out of nowhere had to travel to India back from Australia after all those years. Uh, and there was a discussion taking place in our families that uh, whether Sarah and I should marry. We were willing to, but families were not ready. 
especially because they were two, from two different backgrounds and two different states and uh, there was other cultural differences as well. I decided to come to Hyderabad to meet her family, uh, to give them a look as to who I am and what I am. They asked me questions about baptism and so on and I was at that stage uh, willing to be baptized but not in the sense Bible speaks about. Anyway, on, uh, on during my three-day holiday, on second day, I went down to all the way to a small village called Karnapuram uh, near Warangal in Telangana, uh, 150 kilometers outside Hyderabad. And a man of God in his prayers that day had heard from God that I'm sending a man from far away, baptize him. Uh, yet I did not believe him at that time. I thought he was just lying and making up stories. Uh, but today, having been with Lord and experiencing his love I understand that he was talking truth and that if he would not have heard God's voice that day he would not have baptized me uh, one of his partners that day asked me questions about Jesus very convincingly I answered when he asked me is, 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 uh, what do you think about God uh, who's God I said Jesus is God when he asked do you believe in him I, I convincingly said yes I convincingly answered all his questions but yet I was only speaking from my mouth, not from my heart. After getting baptized that day, from 2004 to 2008, uh, in, his God, in His mercy and grace, uh, I never went to my old ways of going to temples and visiting all other places where I secularly used to visit, but attended all the Saturday evening meetings at a church in Sydney, where I started learning about Jesus, but at this stage only theoretically and more scripturally without any spiritual meanings or essence of what, a sal what salvation could be or is. In 2008, a man of God uh, from southern India was visiting uh, Sydney during special meetings when he asked me, uh, are you sure that you're saved and born again? I asked him a question in return and being cheeky as usually I am as to how could he guarantee that he was saved and born again, let alone asking me a question. He had a little bit of discussion with me and he said to me, come tomorrow and talk to me whether you're sure or not, because I am. I was taken back by his surety as to how a man could be sure that he was born again because I didn't even understand his meaning. A man is born once and he dies once. What, what is this business about being born again? Next day, I wanted to give him some time of mine and asked him, uh, you know, what does it mean to be born again? What does it mean to be saved? He just simply said, if you believe that Lord Jesus is Son of God, that he came in this world, he had no sin, but yet he became sin and went to cross and died such a horrible death. If you believe that he was raised from the dead, you are saved, you are born again. It is that simple. That simplicity took me by very a surprise. All my confusions and my questions and my cheeky answers and, and nothing came to me. I just came, kept, simply kept quiet. And he said to me that he was sure that I was saved. After that day, from 2008 onwards, I started looking into my life in more depth as to what sin meant, uh, how I was sinning against God by doing certain things in my life, and how I used to think I'm a very good boy compared to others was certainly not true. In, during these years, from 2008 up to 2014, I listened to many, many messages, read scriptures, theoretically got knowledge of God uh, to the understanding that I knew in my mind and in my heart that there's no other God but Jesus. I was comfortable with that fact. But yet, the transformation of in my heart which Jesus really seeks for in one's heart had not yet taken place. Even though I was growing spiritually, very step by step, small sp steps at a time, and I was making some changes in my life, uh, which were being reflected of it, uh, yet I was very, very far away after having just confessed from mouth, but not from my heart. In 2014, I came to the knowledge uh, through my wife that many people had been prophesying that his return as Bible speaks is very nigh, that we should still, yet while time is, repent from our ways and really seek the kingdom of God and God himself and be transformed from our heart so that we are ready when he returns that we can actually be taken away in that blink of a, blink of a moment. 
that made me question as to what are the qualifications of someone being taken away as we know as now as know as Christians which is called rapture as to what are the qualifications of it what are those things which will make certain someone to stand and say yes lord i am worthy of it during these times when i went through scriptures when when i went through the research of what was happening i i realized that god was looking for people who were his remnant remnant who were be, who would be found worthy if they were righteous and holy i realized that i'm righteous only because of lord jesus i'm holy because my loving savior is holy and all i need to do is just believe in him and give myself to him and slowly slowly day by day the work of sanctification will start in my life today in 2017 i can assure you that i have assurance of salvation which many people talk about i'm thankful to my loving savior that he has done that work in my in my life he could have chosen anyone but yet he chose me i'm saying these words so that people who are hearing me can understand that there is no other god there is no other person who has given his life for you other than lord jesus christ the one who came in this world humbled himself from his throne and became a man a flesh which is which was his own creation yet dwelled amongst us and became sin and went to cross willingly obediently faithfully just because a joy was set in front of him that one day we will be connected with him by just simply believing many of things have happened in my life which i would like to share with you to encourage you which also give me and my family and others encouragement as to how god had done few things in my life i'd like you to take i like to go back to i'm i'm very fond of cricket so i like to take you back to the 2000 and 2001 test cricket series in india which australia played against india and it is known as one of the best test matches ever played in the in the cricketing history india had lost the first match australia was a strong team india has somehow created records in the second match and they had won the second match it went to the situation that india had to beat australia in india in the third match to win the series on the last day just before the game was concluding india had an opportunity to win as long as well as well as australia i was sitting in sydney crown casino with big screens and took my wife with me and she had the, i'm sure the holy spirit led her to say will you accept lord jesus if india wins this game and i said to her you pray and if india wins this game which was seemingly impossible then i'll accept lord jesus